It's time for the ghost trial! Hell yeah! Whew. Hey everyone, this is Barrio Pokemon, or as um, some of you people from the blog would know me as, uh, Emerant Artist. I used to go by Barrio Pokemon, but switched over to Emerant Artist after a few, um, uh, let's say hiccups. I have been anxiously waiting for the ghost child to come out. I was expecting it to come out not long after my birthday, but obviously uh, our dear moderator couldn't finish in time, which is completely fine. Uh, dear moderator, if you are listening to this, thank you so much for taking the time to make this, um, to make this, this case, because I am very much excited to play it. Also, I'm just going to admit right now, when we get into the case, uh, I'm just going to follow the guide that the moderator gave us because I don't want to mess up. I'm sure there's like lots of really funny like fail lines. I, I think I've seen a few of them from the blog post, but yeah. Now, let's turn this music off. Sorry, very good, uh, very good OST. Love the OST for these games. And... Yes, very lovely, smooth transition, I know. Now, before I actually get into this, I'm sure that there are many people in the audience wondering, what is Objection Lol, and what is this about a blog post? Okay, so, Objection.Lol is a website where you can create your own ace attorney cases and share them with everyone. Uh, and this Ask blog, or this, uh, this Ask blog, is a blog on Tumblr where you can ask the characters of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles different questions and through this a plot has kind of been conceived. There's different plot lines, there's different relationships, there's ups and downs. Uh, so far I, I won't give like too much information on what's happened. Oh by the way, uh, spoilers, I maybe I should have put that in the, in the uh, title, but uh, major spoilers for the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles especially the second game, but um, there's ghosts. No, not in the game, but there's ghosts in the blog plot. Uh, Clint Van Zink's ghost has come back and that's been a thing. Uh, Lady Baskerville is back. Her name is Laura in the blog, in the blog plot. Genshin's back. Baumong's back. Yes, the fucking dog and it can talk. It's a wild ride. Uh, also, someone decided to give the characters a Magatama, uh, cough, cough, and now there is Cyclops everywhere. If you want, like, a cohesive timeline of the actual plot, I'm not the person to give it to you. Although, if we are going to open a wiki on the ghost, the ghost blog plot, I am more than happy to contribute to that. I've actually been going back through some of it because I have self-appointed, I've, I'm now re in case self-appointed um, weird girl assistant when it comes to breaking Cyclox. And I need to look through, look back at posts with Kazuma because uh, guess who's got Cyclox? Kazuma does. Barrack two. He's got five. Black Cyclox. Fun! But let me get some context for this case in particular. So, August 28th, uh, Cosmo's birthday in the, in the blog, in the blog post, blog post, the blog plot. Uh, Cosmo, Cosmo got into, not a, not a fight, but, uh, he was talking to Clint Van Zeeks and something happened and he had a bit of falling out with Barrack. He returns home to have a lovely dinner, you know, with with uh, the two two one B two two one B Baker Street friends, family, all that, and is subsequently poisoned. And Sisato, his sister, his uh, his adopted sister, is the main suspect of attempted murder. Kazuma is fine, but this is what well, looks to be attempted murder. We have discussed different ways this could have this crime could have been done, but the moderator has kept a lot of this behind closed doors, which is absolutely fine. Um, 
I don't know how much I could discuss on this without without my stream getting taken down. Because there is some heavy stuff, but then again, it's it's fucking Ace Attorney. People die all the fucking time. <laughs> no beta, we die like take your pick. But while the case happens, Rinosuke and Barak, they don't know, they can't find Sasato innocent because nothing's making sense. Sasato is innocent. They both know this, but there is no one else tied to this case. And so all hope seems lost until Clint decides to possess Rinosuke and take control. Well, as a ghost, of course, he can possess other people, but yeah, this is why we call it the ghost trial. And that's why the title of this case is The, Prose the, the Adventures of the Prosecutor's Soul, because it's Clint. Uh, there's also some other things that I have to go through, but for now, I feel like we should just jump right into this because I have been he sitting here talking for over 10 minutes, and I think it'd be best if we just jump into the case and I could explain some stuff as it goes on. Also, the audio in my in my ears is really loud for some reason. How how low is this? At five it's at five percent and it's that loud. Okay, I'm turning the your I'm turning the audio down for the stream because it could be very loud for you guys. Please do inform me if it is. All right, let's play this case. But. Oh, I have to I have to scroll down. Sorry. We're all good. But please do not drag this out, my learned friend. Oh yeah, Celia's here by the way. There's also time travel. A sorrowful toast to the unquestionable guilt of the defendant. Please, even you're unhappy about this, Lord Van Zeeks. Councils, do you have any final objections? If not, I am prepared to make a ruling. No, my lord. The prosecution has no objections at this time. No, we... Ugh. No, Naruti, you have to think of something. Yeah, Trucy's here too. Oh, I'm so sorry, Susato-san. The defense... Seems I've arrived at just the right time. I don't want to do this, I promise. But I can't let this happen. Huh? The pro- The defense demands that this trial continue! Uh huh? What? What are you playing at, counsel? The prosecution's case is filled with nothing but holes! M Mr. Narahono! What are you doing? Stupid headphones. By the way, this, this piece of music that we're listening to right now Created by the moderator, and it's fantastic. All I ask for is another 10 minutes of the court's time. If I cannot prove there is more to this trial within that time, by all means, announce a verdict. But if I'm able to do so, this trial must go on. Do you not agree, my learned friend? You! I... M Mr. Van Zeeks? My lord, I would like to request a short recess in order to reevaluate the case. Whatever the defense has in mind, I'm sure it would at least be more than enjoyable to watch it fall apart. What more could you possibly have to say, counsel? As I said, ten minutes is all I ask to prove my assertion. Hmm. 
Then I will call for a five minute recess. I hope for your client's sake that you know what you're doing, Council. This court is now adjourned. August 30th, 11.37am, the Old Bailey Defendant's Antechamber. Oh, by the way, in our time, uh, 12th of October, 13th for me, it's, um, it's Rinosuke's birthday. And also Phoenix Wright's. <laughs> yeah, just thought I'd say that. No, Rudy, what happened to there? What did you realize? Uh, um, I'm not actually Mr. Narihodo. Oh, Clint, it's good to see you, brother. Oh, oh, the sprite kills me. <laughs> Are you all right? I'm fine. We can talk later. I promise. You guys are gonna hate me, I'm turning this a bit down a bit. Oh, so you're Mr. Clint Benzit. <laughs> the name's Trucy Wright, magician extraordinaire. Did you possess Narudi or something? Yes, he did, and I feel very violated. Papa! Hyrus! Oh, I'm so happy to see you. Are you okay? I'm fine. I promise you. Oh, hello, Sasato. Clip and Zeke's! Uh, I know you're trying to help, but you shouldn't have taken over Mr. Narahoda's body to do it. I'm inclined to agree! I, I apologize, but if I hadn't intervened, all that would be happening was a gavel slam and a guilty sentence. That isn't the point. Come on! We only have a few minutes of recess. Why did you possess Narudi? Uh, right. I couldn't abide letting you come to the wrong verdict like this. Miss Mikotoba is innocent, and I intend to prove it. While I believe it entirely, there is no evidence to suggest it. Mr. Narahodo is a brilliant defense attorney, and the accused is his assistant. If even he cannot prove your innocence, what chance do you have? He kind of has a point, Mr. Randix. Are you even sure you should be doing this? When did you regain your memory? Oh yeah, Clint lost his memory, by the way. <laughs> Only a minute or so before I interrupted proceedings. What the fuck? So, were you here? Like, okay, I don't know how, I can't remember how ghosts travel in this, um, in this plotline. Hmm, sorry about that. But I'm confident I know what I'm doing. And, really, I'm alright, Beric. I'm not suffering any after effects. Uh, aside from having difficulty remembering the past day or two. Do you even know anything about the case? Uh, apologies, do I know you? Ah, well, we've met. I apologize for being unable to remember you. All my memories are in something of a haze at the moment. So you don't know anything about the case at all, do you? But that's okay. CC, if you don't mind, could I take over as co-counsel? Uh, I'd prefer that. No offense to you, Miss Wright, but you are a stranger to me. No, I get it. <laughs> Good luck. I'll just go sit in the gallery. Defense, prosecution, the trial is about to resume. You'll be fine, Miss Mikotoba, I promise you. Just don't do any leg-related death slamming in my body. I wouldn't dream of it. I fear I'd break your leg. Mr. Darhoto, what is this in your pocket? 
Oh, it's just a photograph. Look at this photograph! I can't wait to say that. Mr. Sholmes like to, likes to have mementos, but I end up with the... I ended up with it. I sort of forgot it was there. It's a sweet photograph. I don't think I've ever seen Cosima smiling like that. Like what? So... Genuinely. Clint? Later, Barrack. I promise we'll talk. About everything. But right now, we have more pressing matters. Good luck. And thank you. Ah! So good, so far. I really love the writing. It really does feel like an Ace of game. The trial of Susato Mikotoba is now back in session. Counsel for the defense, are you prepared to make your case for the continuation of this trial? That, that means you, Papa. Right! I have to remember that I'm the defense. Uh, checking that an OBS is so hard. Oh yeah, that's right, he has Karuma. Forgot that. Yes, my lord, I'm ready to begin. Excellent. Counsel for the defense, your 10 minutes begins now. First, I think it prudent to establish the facts of this case once more. I will oblige you in that request. Thank you. Please be patient with me here. The victim was Prosecutor Kazuma Asogi, my apprentice. Two days ago, he was poisoned at 221B Baker Street, the home of the famed detective Herlock Sholmes. Asogi is fortunately alive and in stable condition, but came close to asphyxiation. And what was the poison used? Roast chicken. Uh, apologies, I must not have heard you correctly. No, you, uh, you heard him right. Asogi suffers from asphyxiation upon ingesting chicken. Uh, that means he can't breathe, just to clarify. It has been classed as a poisoning for the sake of comprehensibility. Right, I remember that he's allergic. That still seems odd though. If Mr. Suki is so severely allergic, why would he ingest a chicken in the first place? Obviously, he was not aware of it at the time. This was established with the previous witness testimony. I would like to call that witness back to the stand. If you wish. Hello, Herlock! Oh, great, it's the detective. <laughs> oh, I love Clinton, Herlock's like... Um, how, how would you describe it? They have never been married, but are nonetheless divorced. That's, that's their friendship in a nutshell. It's, it's fantastic. Oh, I had a long face, Mr. Narahodo. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to cross-examining him again either. Trust me. Oh, there's Ryanosuke. Mr. Sholmes, I would like you to testify once more, with as much detail as possible. Counsel? I'm aware that this is repetitious, my lord. I have a point to make. I swear by it. Then you best get to it quickly. Well, I'll try not to slow you down. Mr. Sardo had cooked a dinner for Mr. Soki's birthday that night. Around five minutes into the meal, the doorbell rang. Mr. Ostogi stood up and said that he would get it. He returned some five minutes later, saying there was only a salesman. Not long after that, he began to wheeze and fainted. 
I contacted the volunteer ambulance service and we were outside for a time after it arrived. Then he was taken to the hospital. Nothing else was strange. Counsel for the defence, you may proceed with your cross-examination. Now, aren't any contradictions in this testimony? I was there! Oh, hush, Mr. Narahoda. We can worry about contradictions later. We need information. And that I know how to get. From Mr. Osogi's dinner that night, birthday that night. Around five minutes into the meal, the doorbell rang. Mr. Stocky stood up and said he would get it. Turned some five minutes later, saying that was only a salesman. Uh, press. I want to press that. Five minutes in which he was entirely unaccounted for. Objection. That doesn't mean much of anything. I mean, it was only five minutes. A lot can happen in five minutes, Athena. You should know. Silence. Oh, shit. Whose voice is that? Is that the moderators? Or maybe someone, like, or maybe there's, it's like a stock, it's a stock voice for the Objection.lol. I haven't actually played any Objection.lol cases before. So, uh, sorry about that. That five minutes can make all the difference! Objection. I agree! Only if you can prove that anything noteworthy happened. He was poisoned! If something happened, surely the detective would have said so. Unless it was something nobody in Baker Street could have noticed. Not long after that, he began to wheeze and fainted. Okay. It's only a service. What the? Wait, was it a ghost? I. Why didn't. I contacted the volunteer ambulance service and we were outside for a time after it arrived. Then he was taken to hospital. Nothing else was strange. Um. Give. Give. Give me a moment. Give. Give me a moment. I'm not, I'm not looking at the blog. No, shut up. I'm not looking at the blog. Test to anyone. Press the last statement, then object with chicken. Okay, so I do have to press the last statement. I was just making sure. Uh, nothing else was strange. Press. You really didn't notice anything out of the ordinary? Actually, while I'm here, I'm going to check the court record. Uh, the photograph. Oh, profiles. <laughs> The defense attorney's whose body I am uh, borrowing. He is impressively accomplished for his age and experience. I owe him something of a debt. Uh, my younger brother and current chief prosecutor. I am deeply grateful for his forgiveness. My daughter, uh, a genius inventor, scientist and detective. I almost can't believe I had a chance to be in her life. Rienosuke Narahodo's assistant and the defender in this case. A sweet young lady. Oh! Rienosuke Narahodo's great granddaughter from the future! My brother's assistance for this trial, apparently. A friend of Trissy Wright. I'm surprised Kazuma isn't here. Okay. So I'll read the photo. A photograph of the dinner table, dated 28th of August, 7.34pm. Sasato stands to the far left, giggling and gazing to the right. Ryunosuke stands beside her, eyes closed and smiling brightly, his arm around Kazuma's shoulders. Kazuma is glinting away from the camera, and smiling awkwardly. Beside him, Iris's eyes and mouth are wide open in shock as Shom's, at Shom's falling into frame, presumably in a rush to get into the photograph before the time went off. Currently in Ryanosuke Nawahodo's possession. The armband that Ryanosuke Nawahodo wears reads Customer Soggy on the inside, apparently. You really didn't notice anything out of the ordinary? Oh, of course I did. What? Well, none of it appears particularly relevant. 
It has been entered into the evidence only for the sake of thoroughness. In this case, I'm assuming that's code for... We weren't sure how it connected to anything. Uh, nevertheless, I'd like to hear what these out of the ordinary things were. Council. Uh, please bear with me, my lord. I'm so, I feel so bad for the fucking judge. He has no idea what's going on. I need to establish something in particular. What that is, I'm not sure yet, but I need to hear this explained in full. No offence, Mr. Norahoda, but your thoughts are somewhat scrambled. Uh, I've mentioned a few, but we'll summarise. But I will summarise. There are in total five things of note. Firstly, of course, the chicken itself upon Mr. Osogi's plate. Secondly, cast your eyes over to this photograph. Look at this photograph! If you will. As you can see, <laughs> These are cracks on the outside of the building in which I live. Thirdly, this torn piece of paper, with a portion of Mr. Norahodo's name scrolled across it, found outside. Fourthly, inside the flat, I noticed this round piece of glass on the floor. I assumed it was a piece of my analytic scope, perhaps, but I couldn't find a place for it. And finally, this photograph. I took it immediately after dinner. I already suspected foul play and wished to preserve things. Aside from the plate, of course, none of these pieces of evidence were present before the incident. That I'm quite sure of. I would stake my life on it! You've already done that once throughout the duration of this blog, okay? I should think about these pieces of evidence very carefully. But still, none of them appeared strange. Out of place, perhaps, but nothing in particular jumps out. It's impossible that something about these didn't catch the great detective's eye. Uh, but Papa, if you have an objection, then object. You gave us a time limit, you know. Yes, yes, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. I already know all of... Oh, read, okay. I, I already know all of this. And we aren't looking for contradictions necessarily. We're looking for new information. And we're going to pull it out of the detective piece by piece. This is, okay, so. Oh, wait, I can't. Yep. He returned. Yep. Contacted. Nothing else was strange. Oh, fuck. Whoopsies. Okay, I was expecting, like, a dialogue change. Uh, actually, while I'm here. Oh, chicken. The chicken that hospitalized Kazumo Soggy. Lightly salted. The silver plate on it seems stained black. An image of cracks on the wall beside the door of Baker Street. Found after the incident. Taken by Herlock Sholmes. A torn piece of paper found outside the door of 221B Baker Street. All that can be read is some of the address in Rionor. A rounded piece of glass found on the floor of 221 Baker Street. Almost like the type you'd find in glasses. Ah. A photograph of the dinner table, dated 28th of August, 7.48pm. The second plate from the left has the piece of chicken that Kazuma ate on it. The armband Ryunosuke wears beside it turned inside out. And the armband itself reads Kazuma Asogi on the inside. Interesting. Okay, yep, let, yep, yep, yep. Okay. Oops, I need to scroll back up. I am terribly sorry. Did I not? Hi, we're back! So, um, how was that screen? If you guys aren't aware, uh... 
Actually, I'll just go through his testimony quickly for you guys. Because, yeah, so we already know all this. And if you aren't aware, we were given new information. I read it out to you guys. There wasn't anything interesting on screen. Well, actually, there was. But uh, we have to present the chicken, if I remember correctly. Present. Loading. I missed saying that. And I missed not remembering to put everything back in recording. Huh. Alright, I'm going to keep that up. Apologies, everyone. Just shifting in my seat. Mr. Sholmes, I find that hard to believe. Please look at this plate. Hmm? Huh? Who in the deuce did this to one of my plates? You mean, you didn't know it was stained? Of course not. I assure you I would have noticed a black stain on such a beautiful silver plate. Silver plate? Is that ringing familiar? Milan flamed. If I could kindly ask you not to leave me out of the conversation, councils. <laughs> oh, judge, I'm so sorry. A black stain such as this on a silver plate can be caused by a chemical reaction. Namely, a chemical reaction with arsenic. I believe I record time where that piece of information was relevant here in this courtroom. Indeed. Still, this is not conclusive evidence of arsenic. It is entirely possible that such a stain could have come by other means. But it has to be arsenic! It just has to be, or Miss Bikitoba is guilty! There is one other way I could think of to prove it. That I believe would be dangerous and ever an evidence tampering. Oh, what am I doing? I shouldn't even have thought of that. Might I see that piece of evidence? Hmm. I'm going to lick it. No, hey, Shames! <laughs> Someone stop him! The bailiffs! <gasps> Well, that solves that, I suppose. Uh, a detective? How did it taste? Well, it isn't salted. In fact, the white powder tastes of absolutely nothing at all. Huh? Nothing. It tastes this white powder. Surely you can't deny it now. Your arsenic theory would fit the bill quite nicely. How do I, someone who studies this shit, not know what arsenic powder looks like? Oh, fuck me. It is the poison of choice nowadays, I hear. But firstly, Detective, never make such a mockery of this court again. You have my word. No, you don't. No, he doesn't. Uh, uh, secondly, what difference does the presence of arsenic make? You haven't really proved anything in terms of Miss Mikotoba's innocence. In fact, you implicated her. Now it looks way more like she tried to kill him. No, I haven't implicated her at all. Barrack Benzix, Miss Sykes. I'm disappointed in the both of you. <laughs> what? Brother, why? <laughs> Brother. It isn't about the presence of the arsenic at all. It's about the presence of the stain. The stain. Consider this. If the arsenic had been on his plate since the beginning of the meal, why didn't anyone notice it blackening? Surely it would have been there long enough for the chemical reaction to st Was he given it? Wait, was he given it? Was he given it? Oh my god. 
Uh, that's a very good point, Council. They could have only missed it because it wasn't there until the plate was taken into evidence. In addition, there's more. Why on earth would Miss Mikotobi use arsenic in the first place? It was on the basis that she knew of his near-fatal allergy that she was arrested. What use would poison be when the chicken itself would be enough? Maybe it was for the insurance? What? Well, she's seen him live through allergic reactions before. It could easily just be a way to make sure he died, right? No matter the timing of the chemical reaction, the arsenic is even more damning. Besides, it has been well established that Miss Mikotoba handled the food that night. If you have doubts, you can ask the young lady at your side if her story correlates with that of the detectives. Oh dear god, you two! He's right, Papa. We all know it can't have been the rest of us. If what you say is true, then answer me this. What is the source of the poison? It, it. Ugh! I can't think of anything. Think, think! Objection! Tracy! <laughs> wow, I understand why Daddy likes to say this so much. No, don't buffer! This is such a good song though. Anyway, my name is Tracy Wright, Magician Extraordinaire, and I object. Uh, Miss Wright, do you have no respect for courtroom procedure? Nope. Oh, what am I saying? Of course you don't. Thank you. What was I supposed to do, Mr. Reaper? Let you all give up again? Young lady, you best have a good reason for interrupting proceedings. I do, Your Honor. I'm going to give you all some advice that my daddy taught me. When a case seems hopeless, you turn things around. And sometimes that means literally. Think, do you have a piece of evidence that you could turn around right now? A piece of evidence? Uh, I think there's one thing. Chicken. My lord, I would like to present something to the court. What have you now, counsel? This evidence will turn the case around. I'm not checking the blog. Shut up. Present. Oh, okay. Wait. I'll make sure to do it this time. And we're back. Is this the only paper scrap? Paper scrap, present! Is that scrap of paper? Yes, if we turn it around, I'm sure everything will become clear. We already know what's on the other side of that piece of paper. I don't. It's only more writing. And there's nothing useful to be gleaned from it where we don't even have the rest of the paper. I know whose handwriting that is. What? Y you do? It's Maria Gori's handwriting. What? Did not one of you notice that? I only really recognised it from proofreading her notes about ghosts. You all know her! Well, her handwriting is a little... It's somewhat... It's completely unreadable. That does make it difficult to discern from other people's, yes. Well, she is a doctor, isn't that their famous thing? Counsel, are you quite sure of your assertion? I wouldn't have said it if I wasn't. My lord, I request that Dr. Maria, Maria Gore be called into the stand immediately. I believe she can shed some light on shed some very important light on this case. Well, 
You're all in luck. Dr. Gory happens to be in the gallery at this very moment. Gee, I wonder why. I wonder if it if it's because, you know, one of her co-workers and friends was poisoned and a co-worker and friend of hers is on trial and also the person that she had to check over who lost their memory suddenly regained their memory and is now controlling the body of the de of the defense i wonder if that's it dr gory has been in the gallery at this very moment it's need it needs to load a little bit so okay it's dr gory's handwriting and there's arsenic okay so there's arsenic We've just implicated her further, apparently, by presenting the arsenic. There's still a bit of this trial to go. Okay. Sorry, guys, it just needs to load a little bit. Hmm. Dr. Cool. I need to lift this just slightly. There we go. Uh, while you, while that continues to load, uh, hi. <laughs> Unfortunate technical difficulties. But as that, as that's going on, let me see what else I have to do. So I've got to present the paper scrap one more time. Testimony two, press the last statement, then object a new statement with round glass. Okay. Okay, press the last statement, present the new, press the new one with chicken. Testimony four, press the fourth statement with the torn letter. Okay, when prompted, present photo of cracks. When prompted, present photograph August 28th, either will do. When prompted, present the armband. Oh no. Is there a way to save progress? Login is required. I don't have a login. <laughs> I don't have a login. Oh no, will I have to play this all again if it doesn't load? Oh no. Uh, you know what? While that uh, sits sits and loads, the, the the lovely, lovely loading. I'm scared. <laughs> Um, wait, I need to check something. Oh, okay, that's fine. As that loads, I am going to objection dot lol. Uh, I'm going to, oh. Oh, I see. I... I see. It says excellent condition, but I would beg to differ. Login would... I need to register. I... Oh my god. Uh, this isn't showing, is it? Okay, good. If I should that on screen... Oh... God, I'd delete the board immediately. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just registering. Don't worry about it. If I have to do this again. Please check your internet connection. The connection's fine. Can I download this? Share volume. 
Can I pause it? Okay, so technically I... Okay, I don't know if I can pause it or not. I'm so glad I'm not showing any of this because if I was, this would be so bad. Uh, it seems we've, we're having a few more te technical difficulties, so um, let's go back to the music for a bit. If we get Clint Van Zeek's theme <laughs> as this is happening, that's kind of, that's gonna be kind of funny. I doubt it though. Yep, didn't think so. Out of all the songs. Okay, now now I can log in. Okay, I'm trying not to say my password aloud. Save. Okay. I did the prosecutor. So I've saved it. I've saved it. Close. Okay, I am restart, restarting. I have refreshed the case. Okay, I'm gonna pause this. We're going to see if I can bring this back. So that's the start. And we are coming back. Here we go. Dr. Gory happens to be in the gallery at this very moment. Oh! That makes things quite a lot easier indeed. Okay, so I'm glad that I'm glad that worked out, because that would have been stressful if it didn't. Already things have gone wrong with this stream. Bailiffs, please locate her to and bring her to the stand. Good afternoon, everyone. Dr. Gory, is this letter in your handwriting? Yes, that's mine. It was a letter to Kazuma Songli along with a birthday present. An unfortunate present, I suppose. Wait, it was addressed to a soggy. But it's clearly addressed to Mr. Narahodo. What are you talking about? Oh, that's odd. Well, that isn't written by me. Out of interest, what was the gift? Where's Chicken? What? Mama always said that if you didn't know what to get someone, and food was never a bad choice. But she was wrong in this instance. I had no idea he was allergic. You had... Dr. Gory, you had roast chicken sent to 221 Baker Street on the night of the incident? Yes, that is what I said. Meaning, counsel? Then it's entirely possible. No, it's almost certain. The poisoned chicken came from outside of the house. Iris, why are you objecting? The chicken could have come from a delivery? We would have known. Zuzan would have told us, wouldn't he? The young lady makes a very good point. Surely if a delivery had arrived, you would all have noticed. Actually, the proof that it, that it did is already in the court record, my lord. And then show us that evidence at once, counsel. Not the chicken. Okay, we know it's the torn letter now. 
that letter again. The fact that we have this piece of evidence at all is proof that the delivery arrived. There's no reason for it to even be at Baker Street if it wasn't. Now that's true, actually. At the very least, the delivery must have made it to Baker Street. But by the detective's testimony, which the stream has not seen due to the incompetence of the streamer, all that came to the door that night was a salesman. Kazuma, you... You lied. That night, the doorbell rang. The defense claims that... Mr. Norohodo, are you sure you want to be the one to say this? The defense claims that the victim lied about who was at the door that night. The defense also claims that the person at the door indeed delivered the poisoned chicken. But why would the victim lie? I don't know, my lord. Now who's lying, Mr. Norohodo? Um... If I may, I think I know who the other handwriting belongs to. You do. Arthur J. Raffles. Arthur, Arthur J. Raffles. What pun is that? Is that a pun of any sort? He's a surgeon. He helps me at the coroner's office sometimes. R Raffles. Then I request that this Mr. Raffles be called to testify. If this is indeed his handwriting, he's undeniably connected. The prosecution concurs with the defence. Then I will call an hour's recess in order to subpoena this new witness. This court is adjourned. Arthur J... Was it August 31st? Yes, it was August 31st. Unless they got the time when you're correct. No, really? Or Mr. Van Zeeks? I'm not sure. No, it's Ryunosuke this time. Thanks, Trucy. He helped a lot. I'm really worried about what all this means. Who poisoned the chicken? And how would they have gotten Susan to eat it? I think Mr. Raffles will be able to tell us something to that effect. If only Kazuma Sama was awake. Uh, Clint, can I call you that? Uh, I keep stumbling over what to call you. Yes, of course. Clint, uh, sorry for taking over like that. Don't worry about it. I'm the one boring your body, not the other way around. Uh, I think Kazuma knows exactly what happened. I just don't know how he lied. Or why? We'll figure it out together. I couldn't figure out half as much as you did. It's no wonder. I can feel how stressed you are, you know. You're a brilliant attorney, Ryunosuke Narahodo. But you're also a witness. And far from impartial. Bluntly, you shouldn't be expected to keep it together. But I have to. I hate the waiting part. Me too. This court is now back in session for the trial of Susato Mikotoba. Lord Van Seeks, have you hold of the witness? Yes, my lord. The prosecution calls Arthur J. Raffles to the stand immediately. Oh, hello! Hi, handsome. You're the murderer. Good morning, everybody. State your name and occupation for the court, please. Of course. My name is Arthur J. Raffles. I'm a surgeon at St. Bartholomew's Hospital, though the coroner's office has need me from time to time. Mr. Raffles, are you aware of what brings you to this courtroom? Yes, though I don't feel it's very convincing. Getting strong heart vibes from him. <laughs> you have error erroneously. You have made an error, suspecting me of being involved in some young man's poisoning? Based solely on the word of a young lady. 
Am I correct? I already don't like him. No matter your opinion, Mr. Raffles, the court requires you to testify. Very well, then. I wonder where this, um, where this came from. Um, the model, because it's very well done. It must have been, like, made for another case, or... Hey, Mod, did you make this? <laughs> or is it from, like, the Professor Layton case? He's very pretty. He's very cool. Frankly, I don't understand why I've been called to this courtroom. Ah. Sir? Good sir? Good sir? There is absolutely nothing connect to connect me to this case. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have an appointment I really must keep. That's all? Are you expecting me to say more? Stop it. I wasn't there. This is rather a waste of my time. Counsel for the defence, please proceed with your cross-examination. I just have to pull something out of him. Every witness says just a little too much. So if I remember, I have to press the last statement and present some. Call to this courtroom. Okay. Yes, you fucking do. Shut up. Nothing connecting me to this case. Excuse me, I have to... And if you'll excuse me, we'll be right back. As I... Last statement. Okay. Hi, yes, that's the blog. Don't look at my cheating. Huh? Miss Sykes? Ah! Sorry, I forgot that isn't my line. Oh, that's right, I remember making that suggestion. Oh, Athena. I was just curious as to what your appointment is, since you seem so desperate to get to it. Oh, that. I have an appointment at the optometrist. And hi, Doctor. Yes, this monocle is not simply a fashion statement. The vision in my left eye has grown worse as of late. I happened to break my monocle the other day. This is only an old spare that isn't strong enough. Ha! Huh. Really, sir? You broke your monocle? Well, more accurately, the glass came loose and I misplaced it. It is a custom-made prescription, so I can't easily replace it. Though I can hardly see how this is relevant to the matter at hand. Indeed, this is not the venue for idle chatter. This is important, Council. Is it? Oh, it's important. It's important. Uh, actually, I'd like that piece of info that should be added to your testimony, Mr. Raffles. If you wish, Sarah Tony. I misplaced the glass of my monocle the other day, so you can understand how important it is. Where is it? Where is it? Here! Objection. Mr. Raffles? Oh, I have a viewer. Hello. Would this be the misplaced glass of your monocle? Hmm? Where did you find that? I believe I'm the one asking the questions, Mr. Raffles. And I will not be fooled by such leading questions, Sir Attorney. Do you think you intimidate me? Ugh, this is so much harder to be imposing in your body, Mr. Narahodo. How do you get anybody to listen to you? Honestly? I just sort of hope for the best. Well, to answer your question, this glass is found on the floor at 221B Baker Street. The detective, Mr. Sholmes, assumed it was a piece of one of his inventions but it didn't fit anywhere. Now, if this little piece of glass would have perfectly fit in that monocle of yours, well, that would undeniably pin you to the scene. At the exact time of the incident, no less. The exact time? 
all who were in Two Two One Baker Street that night are astute observers. In fact, there have been several pieces of evidence already noted as not being present before the incident. I definitely would have noticed a weird piece of glass if it was there before dinner. I mean, somebody could have stepped on it. So, Mr. Raffles, I'm sure you wouldn't mind giving us your monocle to test the theory. As you're so readily told this court, it's custom made. So it should be quite obvious if the fit is perfect or not. Well, that was a very intelligent deductive detect deduction, Sir Attorney. If only the glass wasn't cracked, I should like to fix my monocle now. I didn't even phase him. Alright, Mr. Raffles, let's see who cracks first. So you admit this belongs to you? Yes. Then you admit you were there. Indeed. There's the obvious conclusion. Oh my god, you sly motherfucker. And yet you were not a guest and nobody saw you. Therefore, therefore I'm guilty of nothing more than breaking and entering. Give me just a moment. Hey. All right, I'm back. Okay, see, so cool, you committed a different crime. Which is not the crime at hand, is it? Okay, but you're at the fucking scene. What? I was attempting to hide my presence on the day of the crime, yes. I apologize for the time I have caused this court to waste. But it only proves me a thief. Actually, it proves you something much more important. It proves you a witness. Oh, huh. that is a fair point, young lady. Very well, if you wish me to testify again, I will cooperate. Rest assured, you'll be a prosecutor for your crimes in due time. Oh, I don't doubt that, Lord Prosecutor. But I'm afraid my testimony here won't be of much use. You sly bastard. I admit. I was in Baker Street on the day of the crime. However, it was my intention to go unnoticed. I am a thief, and I find a wonderful challenge in stealing from difficult or famous targets. When everyone stepped outside, I climbed the walls to the balcony and let myself in. Unfortunately, I was attacked and my monocle forced loose. Due to that fact, I was unable to steal any item before everyone returned and escaped through the balcony. Huh? Who attacked it? Wagahai? Was Wagahai the one? Genshin? Is that a satisfying explanation, Sir Attorney? I truly do feel bad for the young man who was poisoned. But this has nothing to do with me. He gets a tr Let's not waste time here. We'll get the truth out of him. Okay. Give me a moment. I'm going to save. Just in case it mucks up again. Okay, cool. I'm not cheating. I'm not cheating. Okay. There we go. Let me lift this a little. There. Yep, you're a thief. This has nothing to do with me. Um. Despite the fact that he used his poisoning as a distraction? It was a twist of fate, Sir Attorney. Are you accusing me of causing it? I take offense to the notion that I would have to turn to poison. How uncouth. Besides, when would I have the opportunity to put arsenic in the young man's meal? got you. Add that to your testimony, Mr. Raffles. Hmm? If you please. Sir? Objection. 
Let me ask a better question, Mr. Raffles. How is it that you know he was poisoned with arsenic? What do you mean? He was poisoned with arsenic. Yes, he was. However, we only discovered that during this trial. So how did you come by this information? I, uh, uh, well, I... Your silence is speaking volumes, Mr. Raffles. You don't have a way to back out of this one. Aren't you supposed to be the prosecution? Should you not be helping me? Hell yeah! That was... Oh. We don't owe lying witnesses any help. We are here for the truth, not to defend your drivel, Mr. Raffles. Seeing a witness finally crack, there's nothing more satisfying. Mr. Raffles! Explain to the court how you knew of the arsenic. Or shall I indict you now? You okay, sir? Okay, so you didn't just get shot. You're fine. You're fine. Who handed him that? <laughs> fine. You want me to talk so, Tony? I'll talk. What the fuck is that? I know of the arsenic because I delivered it. Huh? Witness, testify at once. Gladly, my lord. There was indeed roast chicken delivered to Baker Street that day. I was the one who delivered it. I wasn't supposed to know every detail. I was simply going to use the opportunity for a theft. But a black estate is rather conspicuous of our cynic, is it not? Besides, it is clearly addressed to you at the bench there, Sarah Attorney. Why are you accusing me and not that coroner? This isn't... Wait, it's not... Okay, wait, I'm just checking stuff. This isn't expect where I expected his lie to go. But it's a lie nonetheless. Alright. Testimony. No, not that one. The fourth statement. Okay. The fourth statement. Almost forgot. I'm here. Day one. Two. Three. Was it supposed to know every detail? Was it press that statement? So you're a surgeon and a thief and a delivery man. Can a man not have multiple jobs, Sir Attorney? I've been many things. An inventor, a salesman, an engineer. A... Continue with your testimony, if you please. Do not get snippy with me, Lord Prosecutor. But fine, if you wish. Wait. Okay, there's no court record. Torn letter. My lord, my, uh, whoops, I, I didn't do so. Uh-oh. And how exactly does it, well, uh, seems crediting you and my intelligent experience has been a folly on my part. A toast to the devil spiral view career. Ouch. It's been 12 years since I was behind the bench, little brother. Okay. Is this supposed to know? Okay, there was indeed roast chicken delivered to the street today. I was the one who delivered it. I was supposed to do every detail. Okay. Is 
this where I present the letter? Okay. Hello again, Ryunosuke, okay, not Clint. So we did get a bit of fail dialogue, even if I skipped over a fair bit of it. You're being hasty and careless with your words now, Mr. Raffles. This letter wasn't addressed to me. Taking the word of Dr. Gory, Gory again, are you? Actually, not at all. It doesn't take a genius to flip over some paper and actually read the letter. Might I ask you to read out a letter to the court, Mr. Raffles? Mr. Nohodo, let me deal with this. You're getting angry. Go on. If you're telling the truth, you should have no issue. Right? You're expecting me to read this? I can read Russian, Japanese, Greek. And this of all of them is most unintelligible. Oh, fuck you two. Fine, if you're going to be so difficult, I'll read it. There are several sections of the letter in which the meaning is clear despite the tearing. For example, you never know what to write in a birthday card. In a birthday card is the most damning. What do you have to say to that? And the music's back, everyone. What does it matter? I delivered. I saw it had a Senek. Is that not proof enough? I actually find it difficult to believe you delivered it as if you didn't know such a detail. However, if it would make sense if... Mr. Raffles. The defense claims you stole the delivery in order to deliver it yourself. Huh. <laughs> what sort of proof do you have of that? Would there not have been a delivery man? What are you supposed to did with him? The traces you left are already in the court record. I'm sure the defense can easily point out the evidence in the question. Yes, after I cheat again. The cracks. Photograph, armband. Okay, I'm going to try and remember that order. Cracks, photograph, armband. Chicken, photograph of cracks. Present. There's several pieces of evidence where we haven't been able to fit in yet. But I think this is finally making sense. Please, look at this photograph. Some cracks in a wall. Specifically, cracks in the wall of the building of 221B Baker Street. That only appeared after the incident. Now, if you had stolen the delivery, you would obviously have to get rid of the delivery man. And how else would you do that other than attacking him? You knocked him out by slamming his head into the wall and stole the delivery. Then he wrote Rienosuke no Hodo on the front. But why would he have done that? That's simple. Kazuma Sogi was not the intended victim. Mr. Raffles was trying to kill me. And that's why Kazuma took it instead. Ugh. But that doesn't explain anything. If you were the one he was trying to kill, then why did Mr. Asogi end up poisoned? How did he get poisoned without any, any of you knowing? Exactly! I didn't want him dead. He greeted you at the door, did he not? Yes, but I couldn't possibly have forced him to eat it before you accused me of that. No, you couldn't have. Mikasa Mosogi would not have missed a telltale arsenic stain. And seeing my name alongside poisoned food would have led him to the only conclusion there is. Tell me, Mr. Raffles. Did Mr. Osogi take the chicken from you? Well, yes he did, but how does that matter? Mr. Osogi took the chicken, and then minutes later, he had to be rushed to hospital. Surely you could see the connection there. Counsel, are you suggesting that he did this to himself? So we were right. We were right. He did do this to himself. I knew it. Everyone would say, did he do this to himself? Like, like self-infliction? 
to harm himself or intending to die. I think I was one of the only people, I didn't mention this actually on on the blog, but I did think to myself, well, there are other reasons why he would actually do that. It's Kazuma. He would do that to protect someone, and he fucking did. He did. I did. Uh, he did. I fucking knew it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Wait, I need to check something. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying. Okay. Wait. It's photo and then armband. Okay. <laughs> I didn't actually check it. I was checking something else. You okay, Ryunosuke? Yes. Kazuma Sogi poisoned himself. <laughs> and what do you think you're laughing at? Oh, Sarah Tony, you delight and amuse me. Tell me, if all you say is true, I stole a delivery, I poisoned it, I wanted you dead, all of that. Well, Kazuma Sogi poisoned himself in the end. So what exactly am I guilty of? Oh, don't be obtuse. Attempted murder, of course. Unfortunately, you're incorrect, my learned friend. You may have spun an intelligent theory, but it is not the most concrete. You have no real evidence that Mr. Raffles poisoned anything. Only an assumption based on an assumption. And you're missing one important detail in regards to attempted murder. Motive. Exactly, what reason would I have to kill you, Sir Attorney? There isn't always a motive to someone killing another. That's the one thing I always found kind of weird. Because there isn't, like in the real life, there isn't actually always a motive to murder. And I don't think I need to explain that Miss McTurbert being guilty is a way more simple explanation. Yeah, it is, but it's also the incorrect one. Sadly, Council, I would be inclined to agree. Ugh! Perhaps I can't prove he was the one who poisoned it. But I can prove something else. I can prove he framed Miss Mikatoba. You're right, Mr. Raffles. I can't prove motive on your part. Or that you poisoned the chicken. Exactly, so... Silence. So I can still prove something more important. I can prove Miss Mikatoba was framed and that you're the only one who could have done it. I love Clint's theme, man. It's so good. Oh, ow. I called in the cheek. What? The crime scene was tampered with. Here's the evidence to prove it. Uh, it said any photograph of... This photograph was taken minutes before the incident, and this other photograph was taken minutes after. Tell me, do you notice anything odd between them? Get to the point! In the first photograph, Kazuma Soki, and presumably his plate, is in the middle, at the far end of the table. In the second, however, this plate appears to be the second to the left, as it has the poisoned chicken. Take note also of the time. The second photograph is dated only 20 minutes after the first. According, according, accounting for the timeline the detective established. That's five minutes for the meal, five minutes in which Mr. Isogi left, five minutes for the ambulance to arrive. Oh, Isogi would have been fucking dead. And five minutes in which the only person inside 221 Baker Street was you, Mr. Raffles. Don't be ridiculous. You are the only person with that time and opportunity to rearrange the scene this way. But why would he do that? Why would he gave him just moving a plate around? Actually, wasn't anything to do with that. The purpose was to make it look as though there had been chicken on Mr. Sogi's plate all along. 
but he made a crucial mistake. He mixed up the plates. Why? All because of this evidence. The armband. Take that. I believe you mentioned something just a moment ago. I can read Russian, Japanese, Greek. But being able to read Japanese. What is your point? If you didn't know any better, you'd assume my armband belonged to Kazuma Osaki. Because that's the name written on the label. In Japanese. Your armband. Now, of course, if you were to see this armband beside the plate, would you not mistake the owner of the plate and the owner of the armband to be the same person? Everyone else who was in the flat that day would have known better than to make such a mistake. Everyone except for you. <laughs> you. You asked earlier what could possibly be in your motive for attempting to take the life of Mr. Narahodo. While I have no answer for that, I can answer as to why you seek to frame his assistant. You were seen. Mr. Asogi saw you try to deliver clearly poisoned food. That's a reliable witness testimony of an attempt to murder Mr. Narahodo. You must have watched and waited, knowing you would be caught because of Mr. Asogi. And you surely realized what Mr. Asogi had done when he began to have an allergy attack. Speculation! This is all blind speculation! Silence. I'm not finished. You formed a plan to misdirect everything. If it looked as though Mr. Meek Tobin had poisoned him, your very presence that day could have been brushed aside. If Mr. Isogi died, there was nobody there who could identify you. So you stole... So, so you stole in while everyone was outside and placed a chicken on what you believed was Mr. Isogi's plate. But you were attacked and did not get away unscathed. Leaving you a monocle at Baker Street. End of the letter. You'll think a great thief would not be careless enough to abandon it at the scene. But you're no great thief at all. You're just a murderer. And a sloppy one at that. Sloppy? How dare you? I am a thief. The greatest thief who have ever lived. No, you're not the yard grass. You shut the fuck up. I'm careful. I plan and execute... didn't plan at all. Even the attempted murder was a crime of opportunity. Face it, Mr. Raffles. You're just another murderer. You. You. Fuyinosuke Naruhodo. Fuyinosuke Naruhodo! God, doing you never deserved this. Okay. I think it's time you explain. Why did you try to kill me, Mr. Rapples? Manders. Excuse me? Young lady, when you said I was no great thief, you are right. My real name is Harry Manders. Okay, I do, I do feel a pun in there, but I don't know what. Bunny is what most called me, what he called me. The real Raffles was a great thief, the greatest thief I've ever known. He was a school friend of mine. I idolized him in those days. Years later, when I turned to him in an hour of need, I learned of his crimes. And yet my pity of him never wavered. He saved me from ruin, and we became companions once more. I would have sacrificed anything for him, but he is the one who sacrificed for me. I was careless. A man died and I was to blame. 
We were only wanted for testimony, but Raffle has told me he would assume my identity to protect me. Ultimately, under my name, he was blamed for the crime. And you, Ryunosuke Narahodo, were the one to indict him. I believe I remember that. I defended a lord's daughter for her father's murder and theft of several jewels. Harry Manders was convicted for both and sentenced to 10 years in prison. Well, not as the case seems to be. I was painted as a coerced and unwilling accomplice. I got off scot-free. How? What the fuck? I was so angry. I hated you. I wanted you dead for taking him away from me. I feel like this is supposed to be a parallel to Kazuma. I followed you, tried to find the perfect moment to strike. And I thought myself so lucky when that chicken was delivered to Baker Street. I carried several things of convenience. One of them being arsenic. I assaulted that delivery man, poisoned the chicken, and tore up that letter to write your name on it. But someone else answered the door. Kazuma. Hi. I'm... Ah. Oh, you aren't who I was expecting. Can I help you? Oh, did he think it was Barrack? Oh. I know of him, of course. He was the opposing counsel of that trial. Oh. And he knew me. He knew the trouble I'd cause. He took the chicken, and in the end, I was consumed with anger at my new failure. So I decided the only way to get what I wanted was to be direct. Everything else happened as you said. I assumed he had ingested the poison and rearranged the scene as such. I was attacked by the cat. Okay, so where's Wagga High? The letter I had carelessly stuffed in my pocket fell as I escaped. Had Kazuma's Soki not been so allergic, I would have broken in and you would have been the one to die. But when I saw what had happened to him, I created a better plan. I wanted you to suffer. I wanted you to understand the pain of losing your partner and living on. He kind of already has. Losing your assistant would rub salt in the wound. It was perfect. I already know that pain, Mr. Manders. You do. I lost Kazuma once already. But there's a difference between me and you. Kazuma was dead. As far as we knew, he was never coming back. AJ Raffles is alive. You can wait for him to be released from prison. You can visit him. I didn't get that comfort. You don't get to speak to me about loss. I am painfully familiar with it, Mr. Manders. But I don't think Kazuma would want me to get revenge. Do you think your partner would? <laughs> no. He's honourable. More honourable than I ever will be. Kazuma parallel. This troll has taken several terms that I did not expect. That seems to be the usual for you, Mr. Narahodo. However, assuming there are no further objections. None from the defense, my lord. Oh, Athena! Not for the prosecution. But I am prepared to make my ruling. Oh, Sasato. Miss Mikotoba, you seem rather unhappy. Yeah, her brother poisoned himself. There was simply a melancholy end to it all. But, thank you everyone. It's comforting to finally see her smile, isn't it? Yes, it is. To finally bring this sordid affair to an end, Miss Susato Mikotoba, I hereby pronounce you Oh no, when's the... Okay. Okay, so the date did get a mi bit mixed up. Okay, I can report that to um to the mod to uh, edit some stuff. Mr. Norohodo? 
Well done, Papa! And Reno too! Yes, you both performed brilliantly in there. You were so confident. Just checking. You made it look so easy. What you get from the prosecutor's bench was really something else. Oh. It was a pleasure to watch you at work, as always. But you seem a little morose. Uh, sorry, that's me. I don't feel too much like celebrating. Hmm? Oh! Oh, <laughs> uh, thank you, Clint. I'm so glad I get to move my own limbs again. Oh, <laughs> that was so weird! Trust me, it was even stranger for me. Mr. Norhodo, uh, are you alright? I just... I can't believe that Cosmo really did that, and that we were right. He could have died. Yes, he could have. I know, we're both thinking the same thing. As soon as we heard what Cosmo had... Clint Van Zeeks! The detective! I thought something was wrong about Mr. Noah Hordo today. I've always wondered what it would be like to watch you unravel a mystery in court. I simply did what I could. Cosmo had uh, quite the horrible birthday, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Oh, it reminds me, none of us got to give him birthday gifts. What were you going to give him? Oh, I was going to give him tickets to a concert. I made him some patches of his family crest so that he could put it on his new outfits. A calligraphy set. I bought him some novels I thought he would enjoy. And Mr. Narahodo, you've been rather secretive about your gift. <laughs> it's just stupid. Oh, tell us! It's this. The armband. Well, you know how my armband was Cosmo's originally? It has his name on it. If you look on the inside, there's a label just like my one. Unfortunately... Oh, Clint. Unfortunately, I cannot read kanji. Narahodo Rionosuke. That's what it translates as. I think it's a wonderfully sweet pr Oh, that they have each other's armbands? <gasps> Is that the present? Oh my god, that's so sweet! <laughs> Thank you. Perhaps we should pay him a visit now, now that this is all over. I really need to talk to him anyway. Yeah, he's um... Mm. Yeah, some stuff's been happening in his mind. Let's, let's just say that. I should be going then. Tell him I hope he's alright, will you, Mr. Narahodo? You don't want to come with us. I think Cosmo will want to see you. I'll speak with him when he's fully recovered. Right now, I'd just like to go home. Clint? I won't disappear, I promise. Balmug and I will see you when you return. Good. Cosmo. Oh! Mr. Munders! <laughs> Stay your hand, Miss Bigatoba. I'm not here for anything nefarious. I wish to apologize. Of course, the both of you terrible trouble and pain. Or for some revenge plot cooked up on my own anger. That is to say, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Munders. I hope you understand that we cannot forgive you. How loud has this been the entire time? No, no, I don't expect you to. I suppose I mostly wish to apologise for my own peace of mind. Mr. Anders, I can't help but notice how often you look at that watch. Is there something special about it? Would you like to see? Is this? Yes, it's a photograph of Raffles. 
Was Arthur J. Raffles a real person? Wait. Hmm. I, I keep drawing my thumb up across it, so I've rather it's rather faded his face from it. But he was laughing in that photo. Could never take a thing seriously, that man. You miss him quite a lot, don't you? Every day. I hope you can be re reunited with your partner one day. So do I. But I won't keep you from reuniting with yours. Farewell, Ryunosuke Narahodo. Ah, uh, Saint Sinners. Oh, um, uh, hello everyone. Hi, Kazuma. How's, um, how's your brain going? <laughs> Oh, Kazuma-sama, how are you? Oh, this song! Better. I'm supposed to stay one more night, and then I'll be free to go. Zumi! Oh, Mr. Asagi! Huh? Are you two? <laughs> we'll explain later, but I promise we're really here! I still can't believe I get to meet you all! You get used to those two very quickly, I promise. Well, it's nice to meet you finally, Miss Wright. Miss Sykes. You too! I already said this to Narudi. We're family! Trucy's fine. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> I apologize, Trucy. It's really good to see you awake, Suzu. I was worried about you. I do admit I was concerned for you too. Oh, that's right, they haven't made up yet. Oh, you emotionally constipated assholes. Soggy, I'm sorry. Don't apologize to me! If you should apologize to anyone, it is Clint, but... I should be the one apologizing to you. I was not angry with you. I am not now. You did not deserve the harshness of my reaction. Didn't I? A soggy? Don't be ridiculous. None of this is your fault. I never noticed that Barrack Sprite like looks down on us because we're but like usually playing as a much shorter character. <laughs> That's funny. You made a mistake. As if that's such a sin. I um Soggy, just let me hug you. Oh, oh hugging him again. Hugs! He customer likes to hug Barrack, I've seen. I didn't. I didn't think he would forgive me. Why wouldn't I forgive you? There are plenty of things we haven't forgiven each other for. And can you not accept that this isn't one of them? I, I imagine that Kazuma's still hugging Barrack and Barrack's Kind of not hugging back, but just letting him do it. I... <laughs> Alright. I accept. Oh, good! The tension was trying to hurt. Athena! Tell me what a sweet moment. I hope this isn't too much for you, Kazuma Sama. No, no, I appreciate the company. And I appreciate the audience. I want to put on a show for you, Zubi. Consider it as a late birthday present. Oh, I'd be so excited to see a magic so CC. If you could do it without the doctor shooing you out for disturbing patients, I'd love to see it. <laughs> is everyone ready? You should go home, Ryu. I don't want to. I'm worried about you, Kazuma. Why? 
I'm fine. I'm only here for one more night. You know that's not what I meant. Really, I'm okay. What exactly did you do that night? None of us have heard your side of the story. I knew who he was as soon as I opened the door. He knew me. I knew he had some reason for being there. I thought it might be arsenic. The platter I was delivered on was already stained black. I couldn't help thinking, if he didn't kill you that way, would he get desperate? I couldn't risk it. I needed to cause a problem that would keep him away for the time being. Did you even consider just telling me what happened? You could have died, Kazuma. You could have died for a distraction. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be so harsh. I know it's hard to think in a situation like that. No, you're right. I didn't think. That's my problem. I never do. Now you're being harsher than I am. Sorry. You don't have to apologize. I'm just worried about how much does this hurt you. You don't need to be worried. And they're back. I promise. I think we should both get some sleep. Oh, the music almost ended on like a perfect note. Is that the end of the case? How would I know? I think that might be the end of the case. I think that's the end of the case. I can see if there's anything else. Yep, I think that's the end. That's a really good place to end it on. Oh my god. Oh my god. Alright. With that over, I'm going to let this music play for a little bit because... I'm going to see if anyone else has asked anything about this. Oh, I can't stop smiling. I know! So, so Anonymous just asked, just finish the chart, I can't stop smiling. It's obviously put a lot of effort into it. Uh, actually, here we go. This is the blog, everyone. Let's see what people were saying. Just finished the trial and I can't stop smiling. It's obviously you put a lot of effort into it. Ah, Ghost Anon causes all the troubles. Yeah, yeah, oh, this. Kazuma didn't mention to anyone that Genshin showed up in his mind, fought off a twisted version of his best friend and tried to comfort his son. Also, Genshin never technically left Kazuma's mind, so he's technically still there. Kazuma's going to keep that one to himself. That was a him and Genshin moment, and he's willing to let everyone assume they're just getting along better because Kazuma almost died. Which, you know what? I understand. Let's close that, and let's put all my music back on. Why is Diamond and Pearl in the corner? That was really good. I was, thank you for your sprite drive for being there when Sprite Gallery decided to glitch out on me. Oh, hell, the sprite drive. No. <laughs> Everyone, cats or dogs? Cats. It's been a while since I sent one of my coaches to his freaking Oscar's birthday present. Okay, so not a lot of people have played not a lot of people have played the um the blog uh thing. I need to look up Arthur J. Raffles now. Arthur J. Is that actually someone? 
Okay, he's, he's a fictional character. Fictional character, brother-in-law of Sir Arthur Corn Doyle, the creator of Herlock Shones. Oh, okay. And I don't... What happened to Raffles and Bonnie? Okay, so it, it's a big, it's a big, um, it's a big reference that I didn't get because I haven't actually, like, read the books yet. And there's probably a photograph here somewhere where the face is just blurred out, like it was in the book. Raffles and Bunny. This... I don't know if you guys can see the full thing here, but this is the blog. And we need to give a big thanks to the moderator of this blog for creating this, creating this, um, this case. Uh, I think if I remember correctly, their Tumblr name is The Apprentice Bebop. I could be incorrect, but they are the moderator of this, of this blog. And there is a lot, they've done, they put in so much effort into this blog and there's been a lot of like contribution. As you can see here, uh, Miles is in the past. He's not mentioned because that's, that's just something else. And I think, uh, I think this was really good. I think this was really well done. This case was really, really well done. Uh, I, I knew, I, I, I fucking knew, I knew Kazuma did that. He, I knew it was something. We were on the right track. I knew it. Not gonna lie, I was waiting for like, uh, us askers to be mentioned in some way. Like, huh. N not even like, huh, so this person's right. Maybe, maybe it's in the, maybe it's in like the fail, um, fail dialogue. <laughs> Where they're like, okay, so the Oscars had, like, no contribution to this. Yes, we did. We figured this shit out before you did. Sort of. Kind of. Uh, Nash procedure, everyone. Natural, accidental, suicide, homicide. This technically was a self-harming incident. But, yeah, that's... Oh my god. Has anyone told Kazuma that they know that? That it was technically a self-harming incident? Well, wait, we just saw Ryanosuke say that. What the fuck am I thinking? Yeah, so... Things are going to be hard for the next few days in the blog. I can tell. I can already hear Ghost Anon typing like a fucking madman. I can already hear them. And don't worry, I'm going to contribute to that as well. I'm the one who gave... Whose fucking theme is this? Reminiscence. Shattered formulas. Oh, that's, um. That's the one for 203, I think. Sorry, I've. I've played these games and yet I think. Look, if the, I don't like the track a lot, like if it is. If I don't obsess over the track, I don't remember where the fuck it's from. Like if it's not customer's theme, I don't remember where it's from. But I can definitely tell that, that things are just going to change in, in the story of the blog. Uh, Clint's back, which is fantastic. Kazuma has yet to apologize to him. Uh, can, can I just say how sweet it was that Kazuma hug, hugged Barrack? Like, Kazuma genuinely trusts and cares about Barrack, and he doesn't, he doesn't want that relationship ruined. And I genuinely think that is extremely sweet that they have that they have such a friendship that they have such a bond and that Kazuma would this isn't the first time Kazuma has hugged them by the way in the blog there's been another time uh this is part of the story but Genshin's grave actually got desecrated by someone and I can't remember why Kazuma hugged Beric specifically but I think it's because Beric said we're going to find this person. We're going to find who it was. And we will make sure they pay. Legally, of course. And I think um, once Kazuma was given permission to go see the grave, to see the damage, uh, Kazuma hugged him. Uh, another time was more out of spite and playfulness. 
where someone told every, someone an, an Oscar and an old Oscar said that people should hug hug Barrack, and Barrack immediately went, "Yeah, please don't do that." And Kazuma hugged him out of spite, which was funny. But I think that also solidifies just how com like comfortable they are with one another. I think that's what it really is, at least to me, it is. And I think I think another thing. There's just, there's just a lot. There's a lot to think about if you, if you go. Athena and Barrack being in sync with one another was really cool. Uh, I think I think there should be like a nice a nice farewell between the both of them when Athena does eventually travel back to the future, because I, I'm really liking their friendship. It's it's not it's not mentor mentee. It's much more equal, like equal grounds, but still learning from one another. I really like it, and they were really in sync during that trial. It was, it was really nice. You know what? I, do you know what real, would be like really like a really good idea is for me to have is for me to have a screen where I say I'm talking about stuff, so I don't have to look at this. Uh, we will be ending the stream soon, so I'm going to put that card up. But I will be continue. I will talk for a little bit longer because there's. There's a lot on my mind. Uh, we are skipping this song. I'm sorry. Oh. Gregson. We'll let Gregson's theme play. We'll let his theme play. He can end the stream for us. <laughs> oh, Gregson. Gregson, Gregson, Gregson. Ugh. There's a lot to think about. The case was really not. I loved how Clint was written really shows how well he has control of the of situations in courts and I think that really contributes to why when the situation got out of hand for him like when he was still alive why he would resort to such a terrible thing such as murder um, which I, it real it's really it's just interesting to think about I didn't see a lot of the fail dialogue but I did see a bit of that brother big um, that brotherly bickering. I would like to see more of it. <laughs> and well, Clint res respecting Rinosuke, I think that was really nice. Uh, what was another thing I liked? I, where I don't know where the culprit's like spiders from, but wherever that is, uh, I need to play it or give credit to the person who made it because that was fantastic. Uh, was really nice. I was expecting it to be about the person wanting to like harm Kazuma, but I think it makes a lot more sense that it was Ryunosuke because Kazuma saw that it was for Ryunosuke and wanted to protect him. And as he said, he used it as a destruction, knowing well that it could have killed him. But he was willing to take that risk. He was willing to die for his partner. And I like that parallel between him and the culprit that. The culprit was willing to get revenge for his partner, and Kazuma is willing to protect his partner. There was a bit of, I know there was a bit of a um, comparison between Rinosuke and the culprit. I'm sorry, I've already forgotten his name. Uh, Manders. Manders. Between Rinosuke and Manders. But the, but the comparison between Manders and Kazuma is much more distinct. And I really, I really like that. And I can understand why Rinosuke is worried about Kazuma. I think he sees a bit of Kazuma in Manders and vice versa. And that that has to be scary for him. I'm sorry, I'm skipping this song. Jesus Christ, where are all my favorite songs? You know what? This works. Good song. Overall, I heavily enjoyed this case. I'm glad I decided to play it like as soon as I got home. I was actually going to take the day off and just play it the next day, but I ended up playing it now. It's almost 11 p.m. where I am, but I'm, I'm glad I did actually. I may have fucked up the stream at the very beginning, but I, I, I quickly grasped uh, grasp the situation again. And don't worry, this will be cut down into a much more concise video. 
I don't know if we'll have a turn thumbnail. I need to get onto that. I actually need to go onto Ryudosuke's birthday present and Kazuma's. <laughs> oh god. And that ending. Rest assured, I will act as the weird go assistant as I promised and help Ryunosuke break those Cyclops. Even if I'm the one who may have coerced him to check if they were there in the first place. All right. With that said, thank you to everyone for watching. Uh, link in the description is for the Ask blog. If you are a fan of the series and you liked what you saw, if you like the storytelling, uh, feel free to contribute to the blog. Remember, you can ask people almost any questions. I don't think NSFW is allowed, which is obvious. But you can ask them questions and contribute to the story. But there is, I will admit right now, there are some negotiations between storytellers because we've been on the blog for so long. So just, just be reminded of that. Okay. Uh, how... Yep, I, th I think I'm going to call it a night. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching. And I'll see you all in the next stream, which hopefully will be a Halloween stream. Oh, the perfect music to end this off. Oh, this soundtrack is blessed. I love this game. I love these characters. I want... <laughs> God, I, I love this series. I love, I love it. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>